Hello, and welcome to this Tips and Tricks video where we will highlight a new feature at version 2023R1 that's a component of the structural optimization. In this particular case, we'll illustrate a new feature known as topography optimization. Topography optimization is used in shell models or surface bodies to incorporate ribs and beam, beads and channels into a surface body. So essentially, how can we take a uh, what's typically maybe a flat surface model and incorporate ribs and beads into it to increase uh, stiffness? So topography optimization is a new optimization method found within the structural optimization uh, analysis system. So just to illustrate this uh, feature here, uh, first I want to point you to the file what's new. And here in 2023 R1, if we scroll down, we can see structural optimization and then topogra topography optimization. So again, this is a subset of the structural optimization analysis type. And this would be a typical result from a topography optimization. Essentially, how much the nodes have moved or being displaced kind of a mesh morphing technique to incorporate these ribs and beads into surface models. So to illustrate this, we'll use this very simple model. This is just a surface body that has a thickness of 0.1. It has some bends in it, but there's no ribbing or beads uh, placed into this. We have this model set up with just a fixed support on either end and a central force in the middle to put this thing in bending. If we go ahead and solve this model and we look at the total deformation, we can see a very typical result just this strip bending in the downward direction. So this will be the basis for our topography optimization. Before we move into that, one thing I would like to note is that you can see that the mesh is uh, homogeneous throughout, and this is a recommended practice, having a consistent element size throughout the entire model of interest. And that was accomplished by just putting in a sizing control in the details of the mesh folder, in this case of 50 thousandths. We could also use local sizing controls. If this were an assembly of parts, uh, we could use a, a body sizing control in the components of interest. All right, so we'll move back to the project page and the system that we're currently working on is system E here. And um, we'll go ahead and if we look over into our toolbox, we see structural optimization. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this out into the schematic and we'll go ahead and place this on cell E6, uh, which is the solution cell. Now, if we go back into our system, we now see that we have this structural optimization system already in the tree. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and select the optimization region. And this is a single part model, so it highlights the entire body as the design region or uh, what we are considering for optimization. Again, if this were an assembly of parts, maybe we had some solids in there. Um, topography optimization can only be used for shells. So we could choose our scoping uh, in this case, it's scoping to all bodies. We can also see what the exclusion regions are. The exclusion regions are by default all of the boundary conditions. So we're leaving the fixed surfaces in the location where the force is applied as uh, unmodifiable surfaces. So it's not gonna be putting any ribs in those locations. Maybe this bolts up to a flange and we want this face to remain planar and not putting any ribs through it. Um, the central location, maybe that's one that we could optimize and have a rib go through that location. But by default, all boundary conditions are chosen as exclusion uh, regions. Now to toggle over to the topography optimization, we'll just simply go to the optimization type here in the details. And we can see that the final option in this dropdown is topography optimization. Topography optimization will expose some additional control such as move limit per iteration. So how, how much do you allow the nodes to move each iteration through the optimization? We can also specify a total move limit. So perhaps there is some interference or a, a controlled gap between other parts and we need to make sure that the nodes don't move any more than some total limit. Uh, those can be specified. Well, for this illustration, we'll leave those uh, values to their default settings. The objective in this case will just be the default and this is to maximize stiffness or as we can see here in the worksheet is to minimize compliance. So minimizing compliance is the same thing as maximizing stiffness. So how can we bend and form and place beads into this uh, topography so as to minimize the displacement? Now the response constraint, constraint was pre-populated. Uh, typically, the or the default optimization is topology optimization. 
and setting a mass constraint is typical for those types of analyses. In this particular case, we don't need a response constraint. So the optimization is set up to figure out how much to move the nodes around to give us the maximum stiffness in the model. So at this point, we could go ahead and solve the model. This model went through about 40 um, iterations through the optimization. So what we'll go ahead and do at this point is just move over to a solved model. So you can see here, there's our solved model. The model has been set up the same way. We look at our total deformation, we're getting about eight and a half thousandths of total deformation. Now, if we look at the optimization, uh, we can track during the solution what the, what the, um, <clears throat> the, the final result is. And this is essentially would be the mesh uh, distortion, the mesh deformation, mesh morphing. Uh, when the solution is complete, we also have a topology density. So here, if we go ahead and take a look and we rotate the model around, you can see where some of these ribs have been placed uh, into the model. We've got some ribbing kind of near the application or the location of our boundary conditions. We also have some ribbing uh, throughout the central section of this component. I also like to put in a user-defined result where we can look at the total uh, mesh morphing. Now, uh, keep in mind, this is not deformation from the static analysis. This is uh, deformation nodal displacement uh, during the morphing. So this happens to be a total U sum is total uh, square root sum of squares of X, Y, and Z. Uh, perhaps we want to look at maybe just in the vertical Y direction, uh, we could look at the mesh morphing or the amount of nodal displacement in those directions. So at this point, we kind of have a concept of what this design could look like. And maybe I would want to see, well, how does this compare to the original deformation? The original deformation was about eight and a half thousandths. So the easiest way that I found for this uh, particular release, and I think in future releases, this hopefully will be enhanced and expanded upon, uh, but was to simply write out a CDB file. So I just simply inserted a command. Uh, prior to solving, I inserted a command in the uh, model that was actually solved. And I just did a CD write comma DB. And that'll write out a ANSYS mesh database file. And then from there, that CDB file uh, can be read into an external model. So we'll go ahead and take a look at system C and D. This is our validation system. Again, I began with an external model, which is that CDB uh, file. It's essentially the ANSYS mesh file. And then we're transferring that into a static structural system. So if we go into our static structural system here, we can see that we have the model set up the same way as before, a fixed support on the end faces, and then a central force of 50 pounds. And if we go ahead and take a look at our deformation, we can see that our deformation is just a little bit over two thousands. So we have approximately a 4x decrease in total deformation due to the uh, these ribs or beads, uh, these formed um, pockets and channels being incorporated into our geometry. So again, this is a new structural optimization technique um, known as topography optimization. Topography optimization is only available for shell or surface models new at version 2023 R1. I hope you found this tips and tricks video useful. Thanks for watching.